Okay, I had a subscriber that asked me to do a video on my lures that I use and prefer, and I've been getting a few questions lately out on the lakes and such, so I thought I'd run through my tackle. Um, first component that I have is my truck bag. Um, I fish a lot off the bank after work, sometimes on my lunch hour. You know, I'll go cast a few times. Really enjoy that. So I have a bag. Primarily, I just jig fish. Um, so I have 16th ounce jigs through probably half ounce. No, it looks like I have a three quarter ounce in there. Typically, I'll throw an eighth um, with three inch Berkeley grubs and Yum F2 grubs with in the Kansas City area, the Yum F2 avocado chartreuse and three inch is probably my go to bait. And I'll take a closer picture of it too. And then in my box here, I have clippers and a eyelet remover to take the paint out of the eyelet. eyelet. Same stuff I have in my boat, I just have it in my bag. Um, when I'm fishing off of the bank, I like to use cheap jigs with thin, bendable, thin wire hooks. Then you can retrieve your lure a lot because I'll fish the current in the rocks quite a bit. That makes it a lot less frustrating. You'll probably lose some fish using a smaller bendable hook, but you won't get hung up as much. And then I have some weedless hooks I use if it's really bad, but I prefer to not use weedless hooks. Seems like I miss fish. Okay, in my backpack, I'll carry a, it's just an old digital camera, and I can film for about 20 minutes on it, so it's perfect if I want to go, you know, fish a creek or something on the way home and film a little bit. And I just got this cheap $16, you know, stand from Walmart. Works pretty good. And then fits in my bag. In my jig box, I really keep two different jig boxes. I keep one with the massive size jigs in it, oddball jigs and jigs I don't like. You know, I'll go up to a one ounce jig sometimes, three quarter ounce jig. I use whatever size jig I got to use to feel the bottom. Because the most important thing is being able to feel the bottom when you got a jig. And I don't think walleye and sauger and hybrid striped bass, they are not jig head shy. So if you use a big jig, they're not going to hit it less. I, I'll, I have a better hookup percentage when I use a lighter jig. I go with the lightest jig I can where I can still feel the bottom, um, but I'm not scared to, to fish a, a heavy jig. I mean, I've caught little bitty solver before on a one ounce jig. They don't have a problem hitting it. And then my main jig box is 16th ounce through 3 8 ounce jigs. You'll see a lot of orange in here. Um, I don't know, I've, I've read that while I can see orange better than any other color, so mentally I, I think it works better. It seems like it does, maybe it doesn't, I don't know. It's just the confidence that I like. And when I fish clear lakes, I, I, I don't use jigs, so I'm not sure what color to tell you to use on a clear lake. And then um, I'll pitch timber for walleye and I'll use some Northland weed weasel jigs sometimes. Uh, I miss a lot of fish with a weedless jig compared to a non-weedless jig. So I try not use them unless I have to. Um, probably my favorite style of jig is the Bass Pro. I'm not sure what, what type they are, but they'll kind of stand up off the bottom. These seem to be a real, really good hookup percentage. And then if I'm pitching the rocks, I just like the thin, flexible hooks. As far as what size of jigs I use, uh, bank fishing, if, you know, probably my go-to jig would be an eighth, eighth of an ounce, but I'll trade up whatever I got to do to where it's ticking the bottom in the current. And then in a lake, probably my go-to jig is a three, three eighths ounce jig. If I'm casting eight quarter ounce, uh, if I'm strolling around, or fishing vertically, it's usually three eighths. And then if I'm moving really fast, I'll move up to a half ounce. And then usually if someone's fishing with me, I'll put a uh, one size bigger jig head on. Like if my wife's with me, I'll use a three eighths, I'll put a half ounce on hers. Or if I'm using a half, I'll put a three quarter ounce on her. And then it forces me to slow down a little bit to make sure that you know she's getting good bottom contact. I keep all the grubs that I use in my old tackle box. 
and I got a bunch of different colors and stuff, and I, but I don't use that many different colors, but I keep them. That way, if I'm fishing in an area that's real snaggy, but I'll, I'll show you my, my favorite stuff here. Out of all this. And I'll keep paddle tails in one, grubs in the middle, and then just straight minnow-like tails over here. But really my go-to baits, and you'll, you'll see it in my videos, is the twitch tail minnow power bait in three inch of course and then on these stained lakes I like the shark or the fire tiger which has the orange and the chartreuse in it and I, I, pr I used to just use these in the winter but I find myself catching fish on on them all year and then if they if they want a little bit more action on a certain day I like the Berkeley power bait um, I like the Berkeley swim bait and fire tiger of course on the stained lakes and then bank fishing and then sauger fishing in the lakes I like the Yum F2 3 inch grub and avocado chartreuse and I bought this color by accident and thank God because it, it's, it's really my go to color as far as stained lakes and then even the rivers around here sometimes I'll, I'll start fishing real early in the year before everybody else and sometimes in, in February, gosh, the Call River is scary, it's so clear. And I've still caught um, hybrid striped bass and white bass on this Yum F2 grub in avocado chartreuse when it's clear and when the water's muddy. One thing I, I want to mention back to the Berkeley switch tail. One thing I noticed about this, this bait that's nice is in Clinton Lake and Lawrence fish for um, hybrid striped bass and white bass and it seems to me like a lot of times they'll be mixed together and you'll have a school of, of white bass and I might you know use a bank spoon or something I might have to unhook like 30 white bass before I finally get to that uh, one hybrid striped bass that's in there but with the Berkeley twitch tail minnow for some reason the white bass don't like it as much as the hybrid striped bass do so I can see a big school on my fish finder ease through there about a mile an hour with a, with a Berkeley twitch tail and crack catch that one hybrid stripe of bass out of the school and then go back through there with a bink spoon and have to unhook 20 white bass. I mean I like fishing for white bass but I, you know who, who doesn't want to catch a 22 inch hybrid stripe of bass with a can. So. One thing I forgot to mention on the Yum F2 grubs um, I'm not sure who sells them. I went to Cabela's yesterday and they didn't have any. I couldn't find any in any colors. So I just buy them on, on the internet. I believe I got them at Yum's website last time and I'll buy like six months worth of them. And then same way with the, with the Berkeley Twitch Tail. I bump into people say, you know, ask me, hey, where do you get these? I get these right off Berkeley's website because I've been frustrated trying to find them or get the right selection or whatever. Um, I'm not sure why they're an uncommon bait. It's a, it's a really good bait. They should sell it everywhere.